Russia neutralizes HIMARS missiles, but ATACMS and Storm Shadow still pose big problems for Russians. Russia's success in electronically countering Western weapons poses a strategic challenge to the United States and its allies. The Russian military is constantly adapting using its vast electronic warfare capabilities, the Wall Street Journal reports. It is noted that, for example, American M982 Excalibur artillery shells worked wonders when they hit the battlefield in Ukraine in the summer of 2022. The GPS-guided munitions hit Russian tanks and artillery with surgical precision, but it did not last long. However, according to Ukrainian commanders, by mid-2023, Excalibur munitions had become virtually useless and are no longer used. A similar fate befell several other weapons that demonstrated the West's technological superiority. Russian interference has been particularly successful with Excalibur, other precision-guided artillery rounds, such as the bonus made in France and Sweden, have also been rendered less effective by Russian jamming, the publication says. Russian electronic countermeasures are also said to have significantly reduced the accuracy of the GMLRS munitions for the HIMARS, a weapon that Ukrainian military officials say turned the tide of the war in Ukraine's favor in the summer of 2022. The deviation varies with distance. That's a big problem for the M31 GMLRS missile with a unitary warhead, which was used with great success in 2022 to hit Russian bunkers, command centers, pontoons, weapons depots, and hardened equipment, the Wall Street Journal writes. It is noted that some other Western precision weapons provided only recently continue to hit important Russian targets. These are American-made ATACMS ballistic missiles as well as Storm Shadow cruise missiles. But according to Ukrainian military and Western defense experts, it is only a matter of time before Russia learns to reduce the effectiveness and increase the level of interception of these missiles. We have to assume that adaption will always happen, and the Russians have adapted to a lot of things, said Rob Lee, a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute. A U.S. defense official said the Pentagon is very aware of the evolving electronic warfare threat from Russia. He said the U.S. is working closely with Ukraine and defense industry partners to respond quickly to the threat and ensure that American precision weapons remain effective in a war. A helicopter from the Coast Guard Air Station in Detroit rescued five people in Lake Erie. The five were taken to the Northeast Ohio Regional Airport, and officials said none had any medical concerns. According to the U.S. Coast Guard, someone in the boat issued a distress call on Saturday. A helicopter crew from Coast Guard Air Station Detroit and a boat crew from Station Cleveland Harbor were launched to search. Boat crew rescued two persons. A third person was unresponsive when pulled from the lake by a Coast Guard boat, and the man later died. After the three rescues, officials learned that a third man had been in the water. Officials said it wasn't immediately clear whether that person had been wearing a life jacket. Another helicopter and a boat crew kept searching but the effort was suspended after 10 hours, officials said. The majority of cases had good outcomes and some unfortunately didn't. Our thoughts are definitely with the families and friends in the cases that didn't turn out as we expected," said Petty Officer First Class Christopher Yaw, a public affairs officer for the U.S. Coast Guard 9th District. The same Detroit-based helicopter crew from the Perry situation also responded to a distress call from the water near Ashtabula. Five people were rescued after clinging to a cooler when their boat capsized. Separately, the Coast Guard, with help from Conneaut Fire, Lake City Fire Company, Gerard F.D. and West County Paramedics, rescued three from a vessel in distress near the Ohio-Pennsylvania border in Conneaut. Easy back and left to get the ball around. 